Hello, we have here a table, weight is 80 newtons, the height is 80 cm, and the length is uh, 20 plus 80 plus 20 cm. We now apply an upward force at the right end of the table. What must this lifting force be before this table loses its rotational equilibrium? Before we apply the lifting force, we know that the 80 newtons weight of the table would have been supported by a 40 newton normal contact force on each leg of the table. When the lifting force comes into the picture, then two changes happen to these two normal contact forces here. Firstly, these two normal contact forces will no longer add up to 80 newtons because the lifting force would have come to help support the 80 newtons weight of the table. See the equation here? N1 plus N2 plus F equals to 80 newtons. Secondly, with the lifting force at the right end of the table, the table will not be pressing as hard against the floor on the right leg of the table. So the normal contact force on the right leg of the table will be smaller than the normal contact force on the left leg of the table. Let's take moments about point X, which is the left leg of the table. We have the anti-clockwise moment by F, so F times 100 cm. And we have the anti-clockwise moment because of N2, so we have N2 times the 80 cm. So these two anti-clockwise moments are balanced by the clockwise moment provided by this 80 newtons here. So 80 newtons times 40 cm. So you can see that if we gradually increase the lifting force F, then the normal contact force on the right leg of the table must gradually decrease. Aha! Uh -huh. The moment when the table is just about to rotate must be when the normal contact force on the right leg N2 has just dropped to zero. So the table is just about to rotate when the lifting force is 32 newtons. At this instant, the lifting force is 32 newtons. There's no normal contact force between the right leg and the floor. So the normal contact force on the left leg has got to be 48 newtons. Okay, that's all. Ta-ta!